in addition, after Meteor, um, you know, the study looked at several um, questions, some subgroup analysis. One of the interesting uh, things that uh, panned out uh, with cabozantinib that was somewhat known from the trial that used cabozantinib in prostate cancer, which is a disease that, um, you know, predominantly when it metastasized goes to the bones. A renal cell cancer also can go to the bones, but to a lesser extent. But a, a subgroup analysis looked specifically at bone metastases uh, versus everolimus. And compared to the patient that did not have bone metastases, knowing that the incidence on meteor of bone metastases is between 20 and 30 percent. So those patients seem to benefit more. If you look at the hazard ratio for both progression-free survival and overall survival compared to everolimus, patients with bone metastases, you know, uh, do uh, much better the, than patient uh, if they're treated with cabozantinib compared to if they're treated with everolimus. I think this is, this is important because patients with bone metastases usually do not do very well in the responses to traditional VEGF, tyrosine kinase inhibitors such as sunitinib, pazapinib, uh, are not that great. Um, the study also uh, looked at response rate and uh, the bone scan response rate seems to be higher with cabozantinib. The study also looked to see if there is any uh, other um, endpoint that justifies cabozantinib in bone metastasis. What's cabozantinib doing in the microenvironment? And uh, actually the bone biomarkers seems to be modulated um, you know, to a greater extent with cabozantinib. So there's an emerging story here with uh, cabozantinib in bone metastasis. And I think it could be a, a, an agent of choice in those patients with extensive um, uh, bony disease that can, you know, differentiate itself from other tyrosine kinase inhibitors.